Hello, my weaving friends. Welcome back to Weave Along with Eloise. I'm Eloise Finchingfield. Today we're going to do a slight detour from our regularly scheduled programming, and I'm going to do a tablet woven band from Birka. Yes, another tablet woven band from Birka. This one is Birka 22. It's kind of a Celtic not work basket weave. A lot of people love to do this one. And this one is actually another one that's really quite easy. It takes a whole lot of cards, but if you're okay with that, you're going to do just fine. If you did well with the last Birka one, this one's going to be no sweat. So I'm going to be doing mine not as the next uh, SCA Laurel Kingdom weave, but as part of a commission, kind of. It's actually paying for this beautiful piece of equipment that's behind me. A uh, gentleman in the Barony of Glimmere uh, made this beautiful loom for me that called the Monster Loom. It weaves up somewhere between 13 and 14 yards. It's huge. I haven't actually warped the whole thing yet, but I'm going to do a big piece today, much too big for my regular loom. Uh, the commission is for seven completed yards of trim, so I need to weave up about eight and three quarters of the warp to make seven yards. So I need the big monster loom to do it, and this seems like a great opportunity to show you how it works and how to warp it up. I'm going to be doing mine in silk because that's part of the commission and silk weaves up so beautifully. If you haven't tried it yet, I encourage you to do so. There's some uh, sellers on Etsy that sell smaller chunks, the 100, I think they're 100 yards and uh, the 20 over 2, not the 60 over 2 because that's really, really too fine. 20 over 2 is great. It's about the same size as the size eight crochet cotton, if you've ever woven with that. So let's get started. We'll show you how this goes together. Here's the pattern we're going to be using. It's based on the Apple's Ease and Fox Noses version that was put on their website. I just redrafted it into the tablet weaving pattern generator that I use. I have 28 cards stacked up and ready to go. I've got the cones of silk ready to go. And to figure out exactly how much warp I'm going to be using, I took nine yards of string and wrapped it around the pegs up and down. I hope you can see it so that I knew exactly where I needed to put the threads in order to get eight and three quarters to nine yards of warp. Now, as you can imagine, the biggest difference between warping up this loom and warping up the other one is that this one, I really need to put it on the tabletop and stand. Uh, bending over to get the pegs that are on the floor, that would just be too hard on my back. Uh, what I've decided to do is three colors of silk. I did another companion piece for this particular weave, and I used white for the border, so I'm going to do the same thing in this one. So I'm going to set the other two colors aside for just a moment. Now, what I need to do is put this on the floor. You're not going to be able to see the cone of thread, but you know what's there. So like the other one, I start at the, the front peg. Now, this is the peg where I'd be sitting and working. So I start there. I'll go, let's see, down here. That is one continuous warp. That is crazy. Oh, I need to grab my scissors. Super sharp scissors. There we go. And four threads per card. may have guessed this is only the second time that I have warped this one up.
Okay, so the first card, now once again, the cards are labeled clockwise. And when they're labeled clockwise, you face the cards to your right. And this is an S-threaded card. So the threads go through the back of the card, or the left side of the card. Once you have all the threads, tie them in that surgeon's knot. Left over right twice and under, right over left and under. And that secures that knot so it won't come loose as you're weaving. I'm going to scoot all of these threads back. We need to make a lot of room for 28 cards. Even though this is silk and it'll take up a lot less space. You do need some working space. So once I'm done threading all of the cards, I'll take this cotton, this dark gray cotton thread out of it. It's just a guide for me to follow for right now. We're ready for card number two. Yeah, this is gonna take a while. This is going to take a very long time, so I think I'm going to skip to the end so you don't have to watch the whole thing, but at least you can see now how this is coming together, and you can see that this can hold a whole lot more yardage even than what I'm using it for today. So if you know a woodworker, there's plans out there to build these, and if you have a woodworking friend, you might be able to work out a deal to make a trade woodworking for weaving. We are all warped up and ready to start weaving. I've got my new little shuttle. I made this out of a wood shim that, you know, the kind that you use for construction for installing windows and doors. I just cut it in half and beveled down the edges and uh, cut a notch in it. It works really great. It's really lightweight and uh, I had to smooth it down so it wouldn't snag on the silk, but yeah, you could make your own shuttle at home. Pretty cool, huh? So. What we're going to do, like we do every time, we're going to pull the tail through the shed and we're going to turn the cards forward, open the shed, we're going to pass the shuttle through, and remember we're going to pass the tail the opposite direction, turn the cards again. Gently beat this down. You notice I left a couple of fingers width between the beginning of the weaving and where the knots are. Turn the cards again. Beat. And now we can start to give the threads a nice tug so that they're snugged up. And now we've done one full revolution. Pass the shuttle through the shed one more time. We should have a nice looking bit of weaving started. Very tiny. And now we can start with the pattern. The pattern is 
four forward, six back, so three, six, two forward, six back, two forward, six back, and two forward. We'll turn the cards, pass the shuttle. And turn the cards again. And the next pair, two forward, six back, two forward, six back, two forward, six back, and four forward. Let me make sure I turned that one correctly. Yes, I did. Good. Everything in this pattern is done twice. That makes it nice and easy. Okay, the next set. Four forward. Two back, six forward, two back, six forward, and two back, and the rest forward. And then the last sequence is six back, no, six forward, two back, six forward, two back, six forward, two back, and the rest forward. Believe it or not, that's the entire sequence. And I will show you in detail. That is what it's going to look like. It's just beautiful and really quite simple. And anyone who likes Celtic knotwork or Viking patterns, this is this is for you. So I encourage you to go out and uh, make some weaving. And I would love to hear in the comments what your experiences are. Did you enjoy it? Did you, were you successful? Did you run into problems? Let me know.